okay now head should be slightly forward as i said away from the wall 3 inches 3 inches away so that the fear goes when the heels are slightly back dorsal forward okay now madam you just learn to lift the leg lift that leg up any leg will do and now she puts you, the teacher puts you there against the wall hold that leg there and move the dorsal forward your leg should not fall on a b but even if she, it falls you have to see that a b holds that and pushes with her head the thigh back and pulls her shoulder blade into the body and she stays there this stability is important what a b is now doing the palms have to be there to the back ribs she has to open up her arm pit chest and rolling of the fingers in such a way it comes forward and goes upward abhi the back ribs coming forward and going upward towards the leg and legs ascending on the wall totally let the legs ascend yeah now the armpit open now the armpits are good but don't push her back you tip your head you can push her abdomen if it puffs if it's not puffing don't worry but shoulder blade up shoulder blade forward yes. forward and upward yes is she is, is she in the pose now you feel understand yeah if full body can be shown by the camera i am happy uh, now see so teacher has to take this much of trouble to move the teacher cannot sit in the front and just put a bow, rope around and pull the armpit because that lady needs to have the confidence her confidence is lifting the shoulder forget your fear and lift the shoulders up move the shoulder blades in raise the chest upward and go just higher on that wall as you are becoming tall become tall pump from the upper arm to become tall now abhi stands holds one leg and ask her to bring the other leg until that she should not leave the interlocking slowly come to the one side and then leave that leg because that's for camera she adjusted you can see she lands then let her come down and then release the fingers so much you have to speak if you uh, don't tell her she may inter leave, give up the interlocking straight away we should not happen you understood what i said so independent help going against the wall and help all this has to be understood by you by teacher otherwise it's senseless just me having many teachers with many certificates i don't appreciate that because that will be a failure half knowledge will be a failure now over let her come up now sarvangasan now i am going to do make you to sarvangasan with four blankets opened for you uh people there against the wall the others in the center don't leave that wall even if you are not in the camera forget learn the asan your face is not important your practice is important now listen to me one thing you know when be knowing sarvangasan but listen 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 if you were able to adjust shishasan against the wall with lift of the chest they need support for sarvangasan as well that means their chest doesn't go up okay now how to do it and guruji took i mean reset mean when he was 90 for sake of 90 or early i don't know for sake of menu he he took the photographs you remember that you know or juvin uh, knows perhaps because menu he asked him that now how am i to do this pose he took the photograph for that thing couple of photographs but understand this now that wall bring it here our created wall of set one that is mobile wall for us to show on the platform now that side now no 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 it's correct it's correct 
And now first lie down with bent legs and your shoulders should come on the blanket. It's movable ball, so don't worry. Now first come to head down. You are just, then we know where to place. Okay? How to understand that? Now, bend the knees and bring it forward. No, forward. No, don't raise up yourself down. But it's down. You bend your knees and bring the knees towards abdomen. Wait there. Now, lying down position is such, she pushes the wall and the feet go to the wall, feet will go to the wall, move the bench forward and let him touch there. Okay? There is a distance between the buttocks and the wall. Now, this much, perhaps the aged person cannot bend the thigh towards the abdomen. You understand? The abdomen becomes dull at certain age. Contraction is possible only up to certain age. So how he has to know is, take that bench slightly back and your abdomen in a relaxed state, Birju. Take it back. There. Now, buttocks do not roll in that manner. So have a bolster or something for the buttock. So buttock is like slightly higher than the rest of the body. You understood what I am telling? So you have to put the blanket um, um, in such a manner that your buttocks are slightly higher, shoulders are there, and this will be a kind of push. The wall doesn't move. Only Budai now has to see that it is absolutely stable. Having the feet there, he has to keep the shoulders rolling, adjust the shoulders, move the shoulder blade back, open up the chest, maintain that. He can walk with the feet slightly up if the shoulders and shoulder blade are not responding. And then he, no, shoulder, shoulder blade, not buttocks. Now open the arm pictures. Open it. Now, maintaining that, he presses that wall because wall is not going to break. At least for so many years, our wall did not break, so it won't break. So many people doing over there. Now, he lifts the buttocks upward, open up the chest, and now take the palms on your back and maintain that position. You understand? So keeping the feet, he lifts up himself. Now, I ask him to bring the right leg, one leg up, right, left, but right better to start with, but except so that you remember which side you have done. And maintaining that right leg up, push the buttock forward and maintain that. This will give him idea whether for the next time he has to go closer. Am I right, Birju? Independent. He will know, okay, let me now, because see, there is, wait, 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 there is a gap between bolster and the, um, uh, state one bench. You understand? Then he brings that leg forward and does. Now right leg goes back, it touches the wall, and now he brings the left, brings it forward. Now whether it's aged person or young person, if the buttocks don't move, that means he is far away. Now I ask him just to go to Sarvangasan and bring that wall closer, that means to the bolster which uh, would I move. Huh? So now it's wall and he has to touch that wall. Touch the wall back. No, Biju, you touch both the legs to the wall. Buttocks up, shoulders back. And now raise that right leg up, see, where the buttocks have the control. Leg up, but buttocks pump forward, buttocks. Suppose if it's not pumping, he has to go back. Now, what is the mistake of Biju? He is not stable on the shoulder. Now, walk back with the shoulders, go, go, and that is what yesterday I said, you people keep it to the corners of the blanket, your head which is wrong. He has to move back and fix himself. Are you now fixed yourself there? Yes. And now come with the leg, leg up. And that distance has to be decided in that manner. Now he can easily move the left leg also along with the right to come up, but X will be in. Now as he has no balance, first he may hold there. Because the person, newcomer, will has no balance. But he should not shift the shoulder. That's why pumping himself, he has to open the back ribs and now be stabilizing yourself. Bring the left leg up, doesn't matter, but stay there only. Stay there. Because buttocks cannot be pushed forward that easily. Am I right, Birju? So, having that, adjust the hand. Now he came to understand. The palms he adjusted. The palms have to go down on the back ribs, trunk has to come up. Did you see that? To go back, because that fear will be there. He bends the knee and reaches the wall, 
with the foot there, then the other foot there, then releases the hand and comes down. Because there won't be hooking place also. The foot has to be on the wall. And then he descends. Second time he may correct a little more, saying that how close I have to go to the wall. More closer to the wall, better. But I should not remain hanging. So he has to find out. Am I right, Biruju, now? This is what the teaching has to take place. Because now as he is closer, lifting is easier. Palms can go, get pushed into the body, lifting can come. Are you watching that on the screen? Independent lift is okay, but their force of the body, understand this. Once we can lift them, give them understanding, holding their legs, lifting them up, etc. But how this body will understand what it has to do? If he is an absolutely newcomer, he won't understand what he has to do. Now only he has to struggle so much. What distance? So you have to ask that person to go back. Extra blanket you may have to give. Height of the shoulder has to be increased. Now bringing that leg down, slowly he first releases the hand, lands the buttocks, and then turns to the side to get up. The wall won't move for you. You got it, what I said? This is all Guruji's. He showed this to many before he expired. That's how he has to practice this. And then he wrote a letter saying that, now I'm doing. He told, showed a half a lesson, this way going to Sarvangasana, chair Sarvangasana, everything. Chair Sarvangasana also was sent, the photograph to, for him to see how it has to be done. You got it? Understood? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, do it now. Arrange your blankets. Those who need height, I have said already fourfold blanket, but same position like Sri Shasar. If your arms find less place, you don't give the freedom. And that's why you need extra blankets. It's not easier to arrange the convention where you need all this. In a younger convention to know what has to be done. It's such a huge size with freedom of the body, freedom of the mind. And now lying down, roll the shoulders back. You can have a belt for your arms, those who know. People against the wall go and find out how they can adjust themselves. The volunteers there have to be a little bit quick. Their eyes should be fast, moving from person to person. And with all the patients, adjusting them as per requirement. I think middle people, you leave. You don't worry about them. Go to the wall, those who are doing against the wall. They need the help. Here the middle people forget. Shoulders back, shoulder blades in. Now, having the hold on the ankles, raise yourself up in Chatushpadasana to raise the buttocks. That's why I said leave you. Because you have to do something else. You have to lift yourself with the chest upward, buttocks upward, armpit chest forward, pump the body so that already the back is ready to get lifted. Leave that sternum region. Against the wall, they have to lift with the feet against the wall, one, one leg up. First is the one leg, first right, then the left. Then again left coming up and right following that, which I just now on Birju showed you. Buttocks up, chest up, become tall. Raise the heels up now when the hands are there. Now push the buttocks, suppose if you are with the heels up, Take your palms to the buttocks and move that buttocks with your hand up, which normally diffuses. The buttocks remain back and you remain somewhere. Take your buttocks along with you. Don't leave it behind. Leave that buttock higher up. Higher up. Maintain that lift. Some of them even can't turn the palms. So leave that. I mean, turn the palms, lifting the buttock. Place it. And now from there, 
This is almost said one Sarvanga Hassan halfway. Palms on your back. Ek baad say to one Sarvanga Hassan right leg up. Bump your back up. Bump your back upward. And now push up yourself from the left leg to come up, to join the right leg. Push. To go to Sarvanga Hassan. Push. Jump like that. And just notice how many of you could not do that. Doesn't matter to me. You lift up like that. So those who could not, they have to find out again somewhere that threshold on which they kept the feet. Sri Shasan people kept the feet there and lifted on that small stage. Now exhale and slowly come down. Learn the same thing. No, come down. Completely come down. How, how Biju came down? He lowered his, uh, I mean, feet he took back, lowered down his buttocks and he came down. Madam, go there. Those who could not do, they either have to go to the wall. If there is no one place, then you have got this area on which you can keep the feet. And coming down, just he came down. You are also coming down. You are not jumping from Ekapar Setuman to come up. That I haven't taught. Did I teach that to Birju? Did I do that? Do you mean to say Birju can't do that? I said lower down the barracks near the wall. That's why that wall was created. You know, adjust yourself, the shoulders, etc. Your belt also in the right place. Turning the upper arms. And now lift the barracks upward. Holding the ankles and chatushpadasana. The, how much you have to leave the place? I said that ball to the buttocks, a bolster width. That much only you have to keep it. And now holding the ankles, raise the buttocks upward. Raise the side chest upward. And lift the side ribs, armpit chest, etc. Now raise the heels up. Raising the heel, I said lift higher upward. Raising the heels. That means heels up, buttocks will come up more. And now take the palms on your back in such a manner that it gets well fixed like Sarvangasana. Buttocks up, palms on your back ribs. Now you can think, if suppose there is a rear, the wall over there for you, then you would have kept the feet on the wall and raise the buttocks and seat up. That means buttocks are failing, that's why it doesn't come. If I fail in my buttocks, I have to train my buttocks. Got it what I'm talking about? You should know, oh, my buttocks are failing. Let me do that. So I will keep my legs slightly higher up, so feet are higher up, so my buttocks will be getting raised up. And now raise the right leg up in the air. Is it the same leg or I'm changed? Other one, other one. Left leg up, buttocks up. See, same, many of you can't lift the buttocks up. Lift it higher. And having the buttocks up, now bring that right leg up for Sarvangasana. You see how many of you are failing in jump. If you are failing in the jump, I said go to that wall, which you did not do. I can't go on again. Selecting myself that you are not doing, you are not doing, why? It's not my karma, it's your karma. Lift up yourself, move the buttocks in. Raise the side trunk up. And now bend that left leg back and slowly land it. Backward, that means as though there is a wall and you are landing. Release the hands and, I'm sorry, come up. You have to go with buttocks descending with the hands released and then slowly descend the buttocks down. So you are on the floor. Did you learn that? Nawaz, near the wall they did? Okay, here who is there? Seema? They did? Okay. 
So they understood Sushma. Okay. Because I don't want to repeat. Okay, now I am going to take you to Sarvangasan, wherever you are, in the same, because it's just lifting up the buttocks and legs, I thought, and landing down. Now you are giving the feet there, and you are going to straight Sarvangasan for another three minutes, just come up to Sarvangasan. I mean, same way, same methodology, but I won't explain. So you know Chatushpadasan, you know raising the heel, keeping the leg up, going, up, keeping the feet against the wall, raising up, going to Sarvangasan, you reach there to Sarvangasan, coming to Sarvangasan, stay over there, learn to bear the weight on the shoulders, don't put the weight, but rather coming on the shoulders, lift your sides of the trunk up. Don't put the dead weight on the shoulders, you lift. As your back of the trunk is coming away from the shoulder, your shoulder blades are going away from that shoulder, so they follow in a natural way the dorsal region or bottom of the thoracic region. Always your shoulder blades should be down. Shoulder blades should not go up towards the shoulder. Shoulder blades have got a path towards the bottom thoracic. It's a lift. Or when you stand, the shoulder blades descend downwards. Here is descendance is going up towards the heel. Lift in that manner with the sides of the trunk. Palms supporting the back. The palms pushing the back trunk. Stabilize yourself at least for, a, as I said, three minutes are, I have chosen. Whether the Sarvangasana is improved or compared to the earlier one. Also watch. In case the blanket is less, that feel has to come to you. If I use extra blanket, perhaps my lift of the chest will be better. Suppose if there are, there are five blankets, how will you lift yourself up? How will you bring that freedom in the armpit chest? So if not in the convention at home, you can certainly try. Always to lift up your seat slightly higher. So you may pile up the bolster or blankets there at the buttocks in order to lift upward yourself. Or you can go to the straight to the pose, no problem. But you should come correctly. Back of the knees, back of the I mean back of the knees and calf muscle extend. Question mark is not wanted here now after so many teaching, so much teaching. If you put your body in a question mark for the, um, the state, then it's very bad. See, still some of them don't lift the abdomen here, three, four people. Japanese also, I don't know. Lift the abdomen up, lift the chest upward. Let the palms support the back ribs. Now exhale and go to halasan. Those are there against the wall, if there is no support, don't go to halasan. You have to land the buttocks downward. Only if possible to do halasan, you may do. If not possible, don't do it. Now exhale and release yourself down gradually, removing the belt. Take out the belt and come down. Bharat Vajasan, sit on the folded blanket. Take your feet to the left side, both the legs bent, but towards the left buttock. Bharatvajasana. Now bring the left arm over the right, right arm is back and turn yourself to the right shoulder. You could have done there only. Instead of wasting the time walking so much, turn yourself to the right shoulder. Now release and take the legs to the right side and turn yourself to the left shoulder. I won't explain to you.
Now release. I have taken Bharat Vajrasan so that you solve your problems in Sarvangasan. Find out. Now take your feet again to the left side. What happens in Sarvangasan to your spine? Why I have to tell you so many times lift this chest upward, lift the trunk upward? So when you sit like that, what has to happen to your spine? Have you any idea? Have you got any idea there? Yes? Huh? Yes, go ascending, become tall, become tall with the sternum chest, become tall with the dorsal spine and then take the hand. And now having the right hand behind, now what is the problem with your Shishasana and Sarvangasana in the neck? Make that neck tall and then turn yourself to the right shoulder. Take the right hand further back so the right shoulder is not caught, your neck is not caught. Raise the sternum chest and head back so the neck is not caught. And now release, change the side, feet to the right buttock now. Right arm over the left thigh. So lifting the trunk, lifting the chest, if there is any compression in inversions, if they are got compressed because of the gravitational force, remove that compression of the body. If you found that in Sri Shasana your head was, and I mean chest was falling on the head, you could not lift up. Whereas there against that head we have to lift the chest when Abhi made her to do. So lift yourself in such a manner that you remove the compression of the ribs, compression of the spine, compression of the trunk. And since it's weightless you should be able to lift more. And now turn that neck in such a manner, you become tall in the neck. And wherever that cervical neck is caught, you turn. Move the back ribs in. So the chest, if, if anywhere is getting caught, breath is caught, you move that. And now release and change the side. Third time. Feet to the left buttock. Left arm over the right. Sit there only in that leg position. Now put the palms by the sides of the buttocks. No, don't turn. Don't turn. Put the palms by the sides of the buttocks. Become tall. Become tall with the chest upward. Legs in Bharadwarasan. Trunk in Dandasan. Widen the shoulders. The buttocks supported. Take the support with folded blanket to the buttocks so that you are tall. Everyone, whether you can do, you can't do, I don't know. But cervical neck pain has to be removed. Otherwise, everybody will feel dizzy like that. So one teacher has to be there with the person who feels dizzy. Opening the clavicles, take the head up towards the ceiling. As you are looking at the ceiling, sternum chest up, which I taught the other day in standing pose, in Parshottanasan, in Prasayita Parvathasan, look up towards the ceiling, chest upward. So upper chest is freed. Yesterday in Pranayama I asked you to do. Now, now take the le left hand towards the right, head straight, head straight, head as usual. And now take the right hand back and turn. Become tall. And the neck has to turn now. Move the shoulder blades in, into the body, descend down and move into the body. If it descends, it goes in, otherwise it won't go. And now turn to your right shoulder. Turn yourself to that right shoulder. Just up, turn them up. As the cervical neck is coming up and then turning. You do it very well on the computer if you have to show the head rotation. But when you have to do personally there, you don't do it. 
because that camera, this thing show. I mean, this uh, uh, computer shows how slowly the head, our skull can be rotated. But you won't do in Bharatwaja, sir. Now release it. Change the side. Feet on the other side. Sit with the palms. Bring the palms by the sides of the buttocks. Sit straight. Dandasan trunk, Bharatwaja leg. Become tall. Lift the trunk. Having the hands over there, I said head back. So your neck pain. If you have done something wrongly, that will go. And this action has to be learned by everyone. Don't tell me that you feel dizzy. No, it's, a, it's not a normal action. Compared to the normal action, it's abnormal for outer world. For you, it has to become normal. Because nobody throws the head back in that manner. Only we do that. So lifting the chest, take the head back. We turn the chest up. And now straighten the head, now take your hand on the left side, right hand back and turn now, don't wait for my instruction, you are not dolls, I am going slow so that it will give you an indication, turn yourself to the left shoulder, become tall with the sternum chest, lift the sternum chest and that tendency of the neck to bend forward, remove. Cervical neck straight. And turn yourself as much as possible to the left shoulder. Take the left hand back. And then slowly come to the center. Release the arms. Then release the legs. Adjust yourself with the threefold blanket for Shavasana. With blanket rolled as we have to go for the pranayama. So first I will give you some shavasana, then we will go for the pranayama. Three-fold blanket for the back. Come to your place to do shavasana. And quickly walk for that. Alternating yourself in order to have the place for your arms to spread, don't commit the mistake otherwise, it becomes difficult. Holding the edges of the mat, centralize yourself. So we don't waste our time. So a blanket, placement of the blanket, alternating yourself, arms holding the sides of the mat, resting yourself, laying the spine in a proper position on the blanket, head in straight position, pulling this blanket to the shoulders. If the buttocks are getting caught with the bent legs, you have to release the buttocks. All that you check. The checklist always ready there. You can't say that don't disturb me. I am in the pose. Because you disturb yourself. Adjust yourself in proper manner. The waistline, the buttocks, everything released. Going away from the blanket. Back leg elongated, extended in order to keep down. If all of you are on the back, then I know. The 
if the buttocks upper buttock is getting caught you have to bend the leg raising the buttocks slightly the upper buttock has to be released towards the legs on the other hand uh, the shoulder side you have to see that both the shoulders remain rolling back your chest remains broad you are just your hands first holding the hand the shoulder down then hands by the side of the trunk if there is a space extend the arm in such a manner that the length is not shorter don't take the blanket for the head too high if it goes too high then chin gets blocked there should not be a chin lock but the head should not get thrown backward both ways you have to find out whether it is going away or chin is down with the sternum but throat is passive the teachers have to go around to find out if something is wrong correct them close the eyes completely let go yourself let lose yourself allow both the eardrums to go inward bottom of the ears completely free from the tension the forehead from top to the bottom descending from roof of the nose to the tip of the nose the nose elongating elongated elongation towards down sternum region though there is a sternum lift the throat should not be hardened or tightened the throat passive keep the mouth cavity lower jaw away from the upper jaw so the space is felt in that region do not hold the corners of the lips tight the unknown tension will be blocked in that area so having the corners of the lips passive you have to relax the face the upper eyelids following the lower eyelid the upper forehead following the bottom of the forehead there has to be a descendence downward towards the legs at the center of the forehead you have to allow the skin to get released to the side so right forehead goes to the right and left forehead goes to the left both the temples passive both the temples receding along with the bottom of the ears towards that small pillow which you have used for your back of the head similarly the lower jaw away from the upper jaw so the corners of the jaw near the bottom ears will not get caught let go with the arms let go with the legs and inner wall of the throat passive keeping the throat passive make your abdomen passive navel sides of the navel to be quiet not to get any kind of puffing in the abdominal region slowly exhale so the whole of the abdomen you find along with the skin descending and spreading not descending and contracting that is different here descending to the spine it has to remain well spread it's a, since it's shavasana slowly exhale the breath and let it descend recede with spreading action so longer the exhalations longer than the normal one if they are, they are longer from crown of the head to the bottom of the feet you will know how to take how to release the breath in during the exhalation as though it's cleansing a soft smooth exhalation i am feeling that abdominal quietness when you inhale is the bottom rib slightly ascends upward in order to spread to the side so identify that those actions 
slowly inhale, but bottom rib cage going away as far as the false rib cage is concerned at the bottom, as though that is going away from the center. So, it does not get knotted, nowhere it should get knotted in the center. Slowly inhale, widening the bottom ribs and slowly exhale, where the two ribs when they are held before the exhalation upward will be released gradually with exhalation. Slowly inhale, broad chest, wide opening chest and slowly exhale, whole anterior body. I won't ask you to compress down, but the front of the body first withdrawing itself from the space in order to recede on the back trunk, which becomes a earth element right now. When your back is placed on the blanket or on the mat, whatever we use, the front of the body has to get released on that. So, the posterior body is earth element and this front of the body unnecessary is not puff. The freedom and opening is explained, as it is explained, you have to maintain. So, though you do not close the armpits, you do not allow the chest to centralize. But this decentralized chest or decentralized abdomen has to be made to release, get released towards the back of the trunk. A slow, soft, smooth breath, inhalation and exhalation absolutely smooth, passive. Both the inner corners of the eyes going deeper, deeper inward. So, the external light does not disturb you. Having that abdominal passivity, when it is receding down, the bottom thoracic has to become clear to you. As you inhale, there has to be clarity as far as the spreading is concerned, opening is concerned, gradually you have to feel or allow the bottom ribs so the clinching goes, because earlier imprint of asanas so strong that you do not know where you hold yourself. In spite of all the explanation, in the fear complex where you hold is unknown. So, now is the time to see that all that imprints that you have taken in Shishasan, for the time being you keep it aside and keep the bottom ribs spreading sideways, giving that freedom to that area. So, inhalation and slow soft exhalation slow soft inhalation and slow soft exhalation, where there is no banging process both ways, neither, neither to allow the abdomen to bang on the thoracic or thoracic to bang on the abdomen. Smoothly allow that breath to enter in and smoothly allow the in breath to go out in this space without any kind of banging or jerky movements, slow soft inhalation, slow soft exhalation. Do not lift the chin upward, unknowingly the chin goes up, you have to see that your chin does not ascend. Yesterday all that explanation which I gave for your Jalandar Bandha is known. We are do not have a Jalandar Bandha here, but the upper throat near the chin should not get puffed upward. We have to form that in depth of the throat towards the spine. Having slow soft exhalation, wherever the exhalation ends, just keep the body, the mind, the brain, everything in a suspended state for a while nothing moves and then gradually the inhalation may happen and that space we have to learn to witness.
It's not that after the exhalation you have to inhale, or after the inhalation you have to exhale. Meaning, Gati Vichedra by Patanjali is very clear. Vichedra doesn't mean only just separate. But in that separation, when you exhale the breath, the when the inhalation has to begin, the exhalation end and inhalation beginning, they have to be separated from each other to have the clarity of that moment, the clarity in the beginning of the breath, the understanding how you move for the inhalation, all that has to be understood in Gati Vichyeda. We have chosen exhalation as a first, as that is the first step. So, when you, after the exhalation, you begin your inhalation, suddenly the air should not rush. On its own, how the inhalation breath happens, if you have to watch, that gap has to be watched. Slowly you have to move that thoracic chest for the inhalation's sake as the exhalation ends. And then as you proceed with the inhalation, having that lift or the freedom of the chest, slowly exhale. But that gap I am not asking you now to watch. We are dealing with the exhalation end. So slowly exhale. After the exhalation, as something recedes from inside, its brain, senses of perception, your body, the organs of action, everything just recedes. For a while, allow that to happen, where the end comes, slowly begin your inhalation. It's not that you have to stay longer there, but as the inhalation is having, uh, having a different movement, motion, direction, after the exhalation, keep the breath in a suspended state. And then begin your inhalation. Then you don't go out of breath. Slowly inhaling, gradually exhaling. As the breath remains in suspended state, remain there. For a while you don't feel like moving anything. You just want to be calm and quiet in that state. Maintaining that, slowly inhale yourself and that, let that uh, inhalation be not jerky. After that inhalation, slowly you have to exhale. So again the abdomen, navel, everything recedes downward. If your throat is irritating, you can just have a normal breath, but you can, can you not give up your shavasana. If the head needs a little more support for the throat to relax because of the cough, you can do that. Have an extra folding of the blanket so throat is passive. There has to be gap at the root of the tongue and the upper palate. Keep that navel abdomen soft. Don't hold it forward with that hardness. And if it's very bad cough, you need not proceed further. You may be in Shavasana, watching that breath, which doesn't irritate your throat. Since you have got the irritation, your inhalation breath should not irritate the throat, and that is how you have to adjust your breath. Rest of the people, after the exhalation, as I said, keep the breath in a suspended state, maintain that state to understand what's happening. Because now the next pranayama, which is called as Abhyantara Viloma Pranayama, where you inhale and pause, inhale and pause, inhale and pause, as though inhalation breath is climbing up the steps of the trunk gradually to go upward. And having that end of inhalation, you have to exhale the breath slowly and that becomes one cycle where you do inhalation with the pauses, but you do the exhalation just without any kind of pause over there. So throat passive, tongue passive, and the climbing process of inhalation has to be understood by you. After the exhalation, inhale and wait, inhale and wait, inhale and wait, 
and find out where the inhalation ends, which way it ends, raising the chest, maintaining that up, slowly exhale the breath. There, there are no pauses, so gradual exhalation. After the exhalation is over, inhale and exhale softly, quietly, slowly inhale and exhale. So that brain is quiet, throat is quiet. Only do not prolong your inhalation and pauses where you feel tired or fatigued with this, uh, uh, in this position. That's why first limit it. You need not worry. Last time I limited it with one pause. You may add one more pause, two either or three. But climbing up process in such a manner that your chest opens, gets the freedom at the intercostal muscles. Exhale the breath. Now slowly inhale at the bottom ribs, open. Inhale further, open the chest. Inhale further, raise the, re-raise the chest. And then find out if possible to inhale or completely inhaling, slowly exhale the breath. So don't get conditioned. I may explain that, but you should not be conditioning yourself. The navel, abdomen, soft, passive. Because you should not lead towards the cough. You should not lead the throat to get the irritation. That passage in the throat has to be felt by you, which is the inner adjustment in the apparatus like throat. Slowly exhale. Let go everywhere. Let everything become quiet. You have, the body has to settle, the mind has to settle after the exhalation. Having those normal breaths after the exhalation begin, slowly inhale and pause, inhale and pause. Find out whether you need two pauses or three pauses. Complete the inhalation, opening the chest, maintaining the lift without having that irritation. And slow, soft exhalation where the chest doesn't get dropped. It remains lifted and then the breath is released. That's what has to happen. After that exhalation, normal soft breath. Normal breath. Soft breath. Quietness. Eyes passive. Inner corners of the eyes looking in the inner darkness, though the light is outside. A slow, soft inhalation and soft exhalation without bringing any irritation in the throat. Now, after the exhalation, gradually we'll go for the inhalation pause. Inhalation and wait. Inhalation and pause. Gradually proceed. Find out where the inhalation ends with the pauses. And maintaining that lift, have a slow, soft exhalation and go to that passivity. As I said earlier, after the exhalation, you have to keep the breath in a suspended state where everything recedes after the exhalation. Now, in Abhyantara Viloma, you learn something different. After the exhalation, when you inhale and pause, of course, you are not doing cycles, you are doing just the normal breath. You inhale and pause, inhale and pause, and complete the inhalation. That is how the pranayama is going on. At the end of inhalation, now girth of the upper chest, you have to open more, with lift of the upper chest, and maintaining that girth, you have to have slow exhalation in Abhyantara Viloma Pranayama. So with inhalation pauses, as you reach the upper chest, upper area, you have to just widen it, broaden it, maintaining its lift. You have to slowly exhale the breath, so you will know that how you are picking up that simple, single cycle in that manner. In Abhyantara Viloma, that means same pranayama, but becoming aware towards the end of inhalation. Earlier, I took the awareness to the end of exhalation. Now, awareness enhancing towards the end of inhalation. Now, exhale the breath, then slowly begin, inhale and pause, inhale and pause, inhale and pause. 
as you complete that inhalation, maintain that freedom, opening space, and then slowly exhale the breath. So you give that much time for the upper chest to get enhanced or open. Having the exhalation, have few cycles in order to recover yourself. If you have got cough, you will certainly when you wait there at the end of inhalation, you will find the irritation. So don't invite the irritation. So for you that attention is minus. You can pay attention for the inhalation and pauses. But end attention, you have to abandon that because otherwise throat will get irritated. Now exhale the breath and then after the exhalation begin, inhale and pause, inhale and lift, inhale and open and let the inhalation fill up the whole area where you feel need is just getting more freedom. Maintaining that, slowly exhale so there is no hardness or tension. Normal breaths, quietness. Now we will be having normal breaths in order to reverse the procedure where you keep your body in a quiet state, the upper region of the chest as though released so that there is no grip on the throat, your tongue does not become tight and when you exhale the breath, you slowly inhale and then exhale and wait, exhale and wait, exhale and wait, complete the exhalation. So now the exhalations are done with the pauses, bahya vinoma pranayama, where the inhalation has to take place as plain ujjayi cycle, but towards the end of ujjayi cycle, the upper chest region, you have to open up in such a way as though it is, it is a terrace on your building. You have to keep that freedom at the upper chest for the inhalation pause in order to have that freedom where the width and girth op, uh, changes compared to the earlier. Nobody is supposed to move the hands, hands are down, you do not play any trick, you have to learn at least that much. Exhale the breath and now slowly inhale where the armpit and chest, upper chest girth will be opening. Having that opening at the girth of the upper chest, maintaining that, you have to see that, maintain, you maintain the girth, exhale and pass, exhale and pass, exhale and pass and where the exhalation ends, you have to have a normal breathing. In while exhaling, that is the most important thing where the upper chest you have to keep having that freedom, the girth, opening, spreading, etc. Now after the exhalation, slowly inhale, ujjayi inhalation, the chest gradually opens up there, maintaining that lift, maintaining that freedom, space over there like a terrace open and then exhale and wait, the terrace is open, exhale and wait, exhale and wait and complete that exhalation and be quiet, be calm from within. Do not hurry up yourself for the next pranayama or next cycle rather, disturbing yourself. So have absolute quietness. As the breath gets stabilized, that means it does not stop, but the movement gets stabilized. The brain has to become quiet, the tongue has to become quiet and then begin for the next viloma, slowly inhale, raising the chest up, raising the side ribs up, maintaining that lift, the girth of the upper chest you have to observe, which almost opens like a kumbhak and maintaining that, exhale, wait, the girth has to be maintained, exhale and breath, exhale and wait, exhale and wait and complete the exhalation. Normal, soft, passive breath. 
is going everywhere, just have normal soft and passive breaths. When everything becomes quiet from within, at the earlier cycle, you have to just see that it doesn't remain there interfering, either on the memory or on the muscles as an imprint. Everything becomes quiet. Then after that exhalation, slowly inhale, opening the chest gradually from bottom to the top, like a flower blooming and having that inhalation, the upper chest which, is like, which are like a, uh, the petals of the flower, then begin your exhalation, pause, exhalation, pause. The girth remains as it is. After the exhalation, everything has to become silent. The space is the silence there. Before you go for the next cycle, everything has to reset as we are becoming totally quiet over there. Then having the exhalation, slowly begin your inhalation, which should not make any kind of rush. Gradually inhale, opening the upper girth, maintain yourself in that state, and then begin your exhalation with the pauses. <coughs> After the exhalation, normal soft breaths. They go everywhere. Just let loose everywhere. Now don't have any grip unnecessarily holding yourself. The girth of the upper chest will recede on its own quietly as the normal breaths happen. No more the normal breath will, breaths will happen in your thoracic chest. When the fatigue comes, the upper chest doesn't take any responsibility. It says, I just can't do anything more now. And that is how you have to know. So though they are not pranayamic cycle as cycles as such, your breath where it goes to the lower portion of the body and gets calmed down, observe that. Somewhere it ends at the bottom of the trunk without picking up the responsibility of inhalation. It refuses understand that and go with that nature or the flow of exhalation as it leads you. On its own, it will come to that feel of <coughs> life in, uh, inside. Slow, soft exhalation, slow, soft inhalation. No fight with it now. No conditioning with it.
with the exhalation, gradually with the inhalation, open the eyes and turn to the side and be quiet. slowly sit on that blanket in simple swastikasana and again today's prayer silently has to be done by you. Sit in comfortable position, both the palms restful on the thigh, don't do it. Don't overdo or don't push or pull yourself anywhere. Having that state of mind which you have created with the cycles of the breath by your biloma, maintain that. With the exhalation, make yourself silent and quiet. Have a good raise of the chest, but eyes closed from passive with the chest up. Gradually the chest has to ascend, not to kick. And then slowly you will be saying the prayers, on your, being yourself on your own, so you are not making any sound to come out. We start there. As you finish, slowly open the eyes. And that's enough for this session. <laughs> this is enough for this session as we have question and answer session later. So all of you get ready yourself. Get fresh on yourself, have your food, and then we will again meet here.